Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about traversal zones on the expressway. Now we've touched on this a bit already. Uh, we know for example that traversal zones go through the firewall, but to really understand them and understand what's going on, we need to talk about why you'd need one in the first place. So let's say I've got a computer over here and I've got a firewall here and I want to go out to Google for example or the internet or whatever. When I send a communication out through this firewall and it goes out to Google, why is it that Google is allowed to come back through the firewall and return my search results? Because a firewall is supposed to protect us from traffic coming in. So why is Google or any other traffic allowed in but other traffic isn't? Well, the answer is because of TCP. Now, you probably know TCP is a type of traffic that requires an acknowledgement, a response. So when I send this TCP packet out to the firewall, the firewall will actually mark that packet. Uh, let's say, just for simplicity, let's say it marks port uh, 1234, okay? And so what happens is when there's a response that comes back to that TCP transmission, it'll come back on that same port. And so that tells the firewall, hey, this is a response to a TCP packet that was initiated behind the firewall. And so the firewall will be able to say, okay, you're allowed to come through and then the user gets the information that they requested. Now the problem is that video uses TCP for all of your call setup and that part is fine but when it comes time to start sending video the video is going to be sent via UDP and UDP is unidirectional so what happens is if a UDP packet originates from inside the firewall it can be sent out no problem but when a UDP packet originates from outside the firewall even though it used TCP to set up the communication, because it's on UDP, which uses different ports, the firewall sees that as just another transmission on the outside of the firewall, okay? Now let's just say, just for the sake of argument, that we could get rid of the firewall altogether, okay? Problem solved, except that this still wouldn't work because of something else that sits in the way called NAT. Now, NAT is a service that sits on your router, and that service is between uh, private IP addresses, which are not publicly routable, and public IP addresses. And it translates between the two. And again, just like with the firewall, when we have a TCP communication, NAT understands that. When it sent uh, the original transmission, it associated ports with it so that when a response comes back in on that same port, it knows where to send it. But again, with UDP, UDP is on different ports, and so NAT, just like the firewall, it can't route that traffic because it doesn't understand you know, using that port where it's supposed to go. So even if we could do away with the firewall, we still have the same issues with NAT. Now, there have been many attempts to solve this issue, uh, some better than others, but uh, so far the best way has been with an old Tanberg solution, which of course became Cisco's solution when they bought Tanberg and that solution is a protocol called Ascent. So Ascent has what's called a traversal server and a traversal client. The traversal server sits outside the firewall and the traversal client sits inside the firewall, okay? Now, the traversal server, if you have a VCS, this would be your VCS expressway, or if you have an expressway, this would be your expressway edge. And remember, the VCS and the Expressway work exactly the same. Uh, they don't, they're different only in terms of licensing. So what I say for the Expressway Edge, you could equally apply to a VCS. Okay, and then for our Traversal Client, we have a VCS control. If you're running a VCS or if you're running an Expressway, of course, an Expressway Core. Again, they're going to work exactly the same. Now for this demo, just to simplify things, we're just gonna stick to the Expressway Core and Edge, okay? Now the way this works is that this Expressway Core, once it's set up, it's gonna send out a keep alive message at regular intervals. And that keep alive message is basically saying, do you have a call for me? Do you have a call for me? Over and over, again and again. And the reason is because, remember the Expressway Edge is on the outside of the firewall and you can't initiate a call from the outside all calls must originate from the core, never from the edge. So the expressway edge, basically what it's doing is it's just waiting for a transmission from the expressway core. Now let's say we've got an endpoint on the outside of the firewall and one on the inside. Now without the expressway edge and core here, there would be no way for this endpoint on the outside to initiate a call to someone on the inside. But because I have this expressway core and edge set up here, what'll happen is 
if this endpoint sends a communication into the expressway edge, this expressway edge can just respond to this keep alive message. Uh, remember, it's being sent out over and over again. So it can then respond to that message and say, yes, I have a call. So as far as the firewall is concerned, the, the call still originated from inside the firewall, even though technically it originated from this outside endpoint. So once the expressway edge says, yes, I have a call for you, the expressway core can communicate with this endpoint and then we can go through all of our regular call setup via TCP, okay? Now we know TCP works fine through the firewall, so that's not an issue. The problem is when we need to start sharing video and start using UDP. And this is where the real magic of the expressway core and edge solution comes into play. Not only is UDP allowed through the firewall, the expressway core and edge have the ability to compress all that media into two ports. Only two ports are needed to communicate all of my RTP and RTCP media streams through the firewall. So it's only going to use port 30,000 and 30,001. It'll use 30,000 for all of your RTP, and it's able to do this by multiplexing it into a single stream. So this would be audio, video, content sharing, everything. It doesn't matter. Uh, it multiplexes all of it into a single stream and then sends it through the firewall. And then uh, 30,001 is all of your RTCP streams. So on the firewall, I only have to open up two ports and then that call can connect. Now, what would happen if some crafty individual on the outside said, you know what, I know these two ports are open on the firewall and so I'm gonna to try to bypass the expressway servers and use those ports for whatever, perhaps for nefarious purposes. Uh, in this case, the firewall would reject this attempt because it knows everything going through these ports must go through the expressway core and edge. No other devices can use them. It's a very secure solution. Now, before I show you how to set this up, there's a couple of important things to note. Uh, first, when you do this, you're gonna wanna start with the expressway edge and do the core second. And the reason for this is because remember, our expressway core is gonna be sending out a keep alive message once we set it up. And so if our edge isn't there to receive that keep alive message, the expressway core is gonna time out. Now, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it sort of delays the setup process. And so the best practice is just to configure your edge first. Now, second, because we're talking about firewall traversal, it has to be a secure connection between the core and edge. We don't want any other servers being able to mimic that communication. Now, in a previous video, we went over authentication, and so if you missed that video or if you just want a refresher, you can check the link down in the description. I'll go ahead and post that for you. Otherwise, you'll remember that uh, you have to use authentication between the Expressway Core and Edge, and because the Expressway Edge is a traversal server, the core always has to authenticate to the Edge. So before we even get to building our zone, we have to set up credentials, a username and a password in the authentication database. Okay, so I've got my Expressway Core and Edge ready to go. Uh, this tab over here on the left is my Expressway Core, and this tab on the right is my Expressway Edge. Again, we're gonna go to the Expressway Edge first, and to configure the username and password, you'll just go to Configuration, Authentication, Devices, and then Local Database. Okay, we'll come down here and click New. And so here, I'm just gonna put in uh, Cisco, all lowercase. It's case sensitive. And I'll go ahead and do that uh, for the password as well. And then we'll come down here and create credential. Now, something to note, when you use authentication for endpoints, you can use any username and password combinations that are in your database. Meaning the password doesn't necessarily have to match to this specific username. As long as it's one of the usernames or, or one of the passwords in your database, any combination is going to be okay. Now, that's for endpoints, but here, for your traversal zone, that's not going to work. If I put in here that my username is Cisco, I have to use the password that I set up for this specific username on my traversal client zone, on my Expressway core, and nothing else. No other password, uh, even if it is in the database, no other password is going to work. Okay, so make sure to note the password for this, they have to match. Okay, now we can go ahead and set up our zone. So we'll go to configuration, zones, zones, and then down here we'll click new. 
And then we're going to call this, I guess, uh, traversal zone. And then here we'll create a traversal server. Now here's where you're going to put in the username that we just created. Now remember that's Cisco, all lowercase. And then we'll put the password in on the Expressway Core a little bit later. And uh, that's how they'll authenticate. Now, if you'd forgotten to set up your credentials first, uh, in fact, uh, that's a very common thing to do. A lot of people forget to create their credentials first before they set up their traversal zone. So if you had forgotten to do that, uh, what you could do is just click this little link here where it says add edit local authentication database. And then you get this little pop-up window here. And uh, you could create the username and password without having to navigate away from the zone configuration page. Uh, just kind of an FYI. But we're all set here, uh, so we can go ahead and close that out. Okay, now for H323. Okay, so for this example, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on. Uh, this is just a regular traversal zone, which works for both H323 and SIP. So it's fine to just leave that on. Now for the protocol here, remember we're talking about Ascent. Uh, this is the protocol that Tanberg created that makes the traversal magic possible with the multiplexing down to two ports, okay? So if we click this arrow, you can see we have uh, h460.18, and then down here uh, we have h460.19. So what these are, when the ITU, uh, they created H323, when they saw what Ascent could do, they approached Tanberg and asked if they could create their own protocol and base it off of Ascent. And of course, Tanberg said, sure, okay. And, and so H460.18 and H460.19 were created to work almost exactly like Ascent, uh, except dot .18, it, it can't do multiplexing. Uh, it'll open up an extra, I think it's an extra 2,500 ports, which is definitely less secure. Uh, and then dot .19, it can do multiplexing, but both dot .18 and dot .19 can be used only with H323. It can't use SIP. So Ascent is still the best option here because you have both SIP and H323 and everything is multiplexed into two ports just by using Ascent, okay? So here we have the port and it's going to default to 6001. But if I created another traversal zone, it would default to 6002. And if I created another, it would default to 6003, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so now this port is not the port that all of the media is multiplexed and sent to the expressway core. Remember, that's going to be done on port 30,000 and 30,001. This is the port that the expressway edge uses to listen for the keep alive message from the expressway core. Remember, the expressway core is going to be constantly be sending out a message. Do you have a call for me? Do you have a call for me? Okay, so this is the port that's going to be listening for that message. Okay, so let's look at SIP. Now, note that the default Keep Alive port for SIP is 7001, and just like with H323, another traversal zone would default to 7002, the next one to 7003, etc. Okay, so for transport, you can use whatever you want. This is just for sending the packet, so we'll just leave it on TLS to keep it secure. Uh, the rest of this, you can leave it on their default options, but uh, come down here uh, for authentication. Again, I like to always put it on treat as authenticated. Now, keep in mind, uh, this setting here is not for the Expressway Core and Edge. Uh, they're required to use authentication. What this setting is for is uh, the devices that connect to them. And again, if you haven't watched the video on authentication, go back and watch that as soon as possible. Now, notice there's nowhere to put the IP address of the Expressway Core because remember, I can't initiate a communication from the Expressway Edge. So the only way the Expressway Edge knows where to send the reply message to is from the Keep Alive message from the Expressway Core, okay? So we'll go ahead and create zone down here. And don't forget, whenever we create a zone, we need to create search rules. And notice, uh, before we do that, notice down here it says, on no active connections. Uh, that'll change when we set up the other side. Uh, right now it's just listening, uh, just waiting for a connection, and it'll do that uh, pretty much indefinitely. Okay, so real quick we'll just uh, go into search rules, and we'll call this traversal SR, I guess. Now for priority we'll just say 200, and uh, any alias will work. Again, I'm just configuring this for uh, a catch-all just to make it work. Of course, in a real environment, you wouldn't want to do that. Okay, and then we'll apply it to the traversal zone here. 
and then we'll create our search rule. Okay, now I'm gonna come up here to the tab on the left. This is my Expressway Core. Now, we don't have to do anything with authentication here because this is the client side. So all we really have to do is go up here to Configuration, Zones, and then Zones. And of course, we'll click New here. We'll name this one, I guess, Traversal Zone. And this time we want to create a Traversal Client Zone. So we'll select that one. Okay, and then down here, this is where we put in our username and password. For the username, we said, remember, it's Cisco, all lowercase. Again, remember, the password for that specific username is also going to be Cisco, all lowercase. Okay, and then down here for H323, of course, we're going to use Ascent. And remember, we said for H323, we're going to use port 6001. And then down here for SIP, uh, we said we'd use 7001. And then, of course, we can leave everything else uh, at their default values, uh, except, of course, for the authentication. We're going to change this to treat as authenticated. And again, this is just for the devices that are connecting to them. Okay, and down here for the peer address, we need to put in the IP address for the Expressway Edge. Okay, and then we'll click Create Zone. Okay, now notice that under the H323 status, it says active, but then SIP says checking. But if we refresh the page, it should show active there like that. Okay, so again, you're going to need to create a search rule. And again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to put in uh, a kind of an any catch all to make this work quick and easy. Uh, so we'll click new here. We'll call this traversal SR, I guess. And we'll give that a priority of 200. And again, any alias is fine. And the target is the traversal zone, of course. And then we'll come down here and click create search rule. And we're all set. Okay, that's traversal zones. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.